Hey there, folks. Professor Austin, how you doing? Excellent. Hi there. Uh, I may, once we get started, mute everybody. I've found that uh, what tends to happen is people's background noise overwhelms large meetings like this. So uh, what you'll probably need to do is just uh, pop your hand up, drop something in the chat as we go along. I'll do what I can to keep an eye on the chat as this is rolling and make a comment along the way. And here in about a minute, we'll get started. We'll give a chance for folks to get signed in. Um, right? If you're driving, there, I'm sorry, there's little I can do to, to let you grab my attention. If I leave everybody's audio up, then we're going to have a lot of background noise and it'll be hard for anybody to hear. Cool. Um, I'm thinking about an hour. And if you need to leave at any point in time, by all means, feel free to do that. If you were in the face-to-face -face class, you're, you're in the face-to-face -face meeting, you really don't have any major need to be here. I'm not going to be adding anything really new here, so it's going to be kind of the same story. And I think I answered that for somebody in the... Uh, and the group me group, so if you already asked that, then yep, there you go. That was the answer to that. So um, for those who can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and bring my itinerary online and kind of give you an idea of what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be talking about time you're spending working. I uh, want to make sure you guys can find the lecture videos on D2L. We'll look at exam reviews on learning catalytics briefly, although I think most of you guys have found those already. A bit about mastering homework. Uh, I want to point out that that's open book, and we'll talk about that. We'll look at the study area. I'd like to make sure you're finding everything in there that you can. And we'll talk about the lab tutorial. Obviously, we're not in the face-to-face -face where we were uh, at the um, main campus for that meeting. And I actually walked the folks down the hall and showed them the study area. But I'll point out, I'll kind of describe for you where it is. We'll have a little bit of discussion about study groups, and we may take some time to look at how to do some complete anatomy stuff. So that's kind of what I had planned for right now. Uh, I'm going to move most of the controls off screen. Uh, I've got a second screen up here running, so I'll do what I can to kind of keep an eye on uh, chat out of my other side. But while these first few slides are up, I've only got four or five slides, as you can see here, uh, then I'm probably not going to be able to see. You know what? Actually, I can see the chat just fine. Um, you know, and I, you know what? I haven't muted anybody. We'll just leave it as is right now. I think our background noise levels are kind of okay. Uh, I'm going to turn my video on just so you guys can see me here along the way, along with this big monster microphone. So, hi there. Uh, and I kind of wanted to get this started. I've called this thing the Success Workshop. I hope it uh, at least works out to something vaguely resembling that. And we're going to begin sort of with kind of the uh, question that I know you guys are going to love to hate. And that's how much time should you really be investing in what we're doing. And I think that some of you, uh, not all, but some of you have grossly misunderstood what I think is reasonable on this. And I have some evidence, so I'm not just making up numbers here. So you guys gave me a poll uh, on uh, GroupMe a couple of days ago, and for some of you in Learning Catalytics as well, to talk about how much time you're spending. Uh, you and I are taking... Uh, 11 weeks of our summer to do this course and we're doing it of course we are doing it online and I don't think anybody's surprised by the fact that we're doing that online by the way we may, we may occasionally hear sounds like that that somebody's joined just ignore those um, if we were doing a face-to-face -face class instead of an online class then I've got some data here from a real class again ignore the uh, doorbells those are people joining us uh, in a face-to-face -face class that's going on right now at Temple College uh, that is 11 weeks long, just like you and I are doing, uh, this one happens to be at the Hutto campus, and they meet from 8 to 12.15 uh, twice a week. That, if you do the math on that, 8 to 10 is 2 hours, 10.15 to 12.15 is 2 more hours, so that's 4 hours twice a week, 4 and 4 is 8 hours. So, realistically... If you were in a face-to-face -face class with me, you would be spending eight hours of literally time with your butt in a chair sitting in front of me face-to-face. -face. If you go online and Google, and by the way, that's simply doing class time. That is being in class. 
And I think it's fair to say that for most people on the call, you would understand that if you are simply going to class and doing zero else, there's not any study time involved. Um, what would you do about extra study time? And you can actually Google a phrase, uh, how much time should I spend studying for college? Uh, there's some interesting data out there. Uh, and I don't want you to take my word on this. As I said, go Google how much time should a college student study. You'll find several articles. Uh, I brought up one of these. And the point here is that, and if, excuse me, instructors all over the country would tell you this, for every hour you spend in class, you should reasonably expect to spend two to three hours of study time in addition to class time. So for you and I, just as a reminder, if we were a face-to-face -face class, that would be eight hours of class time. Realistically, that for us is sort of the video and maybe doing some of the basic uh, dynamic study modules on mastering. So in addition to that, 16 is two more for every hour. You could even go three more for that. Uh, so realistically, and again, this is not me making up numbers. There's a lot of research behind this. For the course you and I are working on together, that's 24 hours uh, per week of reasonable time for success. You guys told me what you're doing. We had, for AMP1, we had one person who admitted to spending two to four hours. We have... Okay, what I'm going to do here then is I'm actually going to come in here and mute everybody except myself. And hopefully that will help. Mute. Uh, what was the question there? Uh, actually, I've just muted everybody, so please put your uh, questions in chat. Uh, okay. Okay, yeah. Please, please put your questions in the chat because I ended up just muting everybody. And you know what? Let me unmute you guys. I, I managed somehow to get myself on mute. Uh, Zoom does that on occasion. So I am now unmuting you guys. We'll see if we can't get me straightened out here and there was a question there please go ahead and ask that again okay we I think we've got that squared away can you guys hear me now okay all right so, okay so what you guys were telling me whenever we did the poll for AMP one there was one person who was studying two to four hours uh, two people who were studying four to six, three people who were six to eight, six people who were studying eight to ten. And for AMP1, eight people are studying more than ten hours. AMP2 is a little different, obviously. We had nobody in the two to four hour range. We had four people doing four to six, five people six to eight, eight people, do, sorry, two people doing eight to ten, and three people doing uh, more than ten. So what I was saying there, in case you didn't hear that, and I'll even back up one screen if we need to, but for every hour you're in class, you realistically need to be studying two to three additional study hours. And did you guys hear when I had this slide up, the discussion about uh, the amount of time spent in a face-to-face -face class on Temple College? What, did you guys, would I, was I still coming through when that slide was up? Okay, all right. The point I was making here is there is a face-to-face -face class running right now where students at the Hutto campus are meeting from 8 to 10 for lecture and 10.15 to 12.15 for lab. So there's a 15-minute break in there. So those students in a face-to-face -face class spending the same 11 weeks that we're spending are actually in class with their butts in a chair eight hours a week. The so eight hours is sort of our class time, and that is truly just class time. And if you will go check online, Googling the phrase, how much time should a college student study? Again, this is not me making up numbers. This is real data. This is a segment from one of those articles you'll find for every hour you're in class. A student truly needs to spend between two and three hours of study time in addition to that class time to succeed. So... When I was saying that we're technically doing about eight hours of class time, you need at least 16, maybe as much as 24 additional hours of study time. And I know that will freak you out hearing that, 
But if you really truly want to walk out of this particular class with an A, then 24 hours per week is not unreasonable. What you guys were telling me you were doing is more on the order of, you know, between two and 10 hours. So for some of you who are considering time invested, that's something to take a look at. Again, not me making up numbers. That is instructors across the country saying if you want to succeed in a college class, that's what to do. I get it. You guys are getting on with life and you've got jobs and family, but you did sign up for A&P in the summer. So that's kind of the first big shocking news that I wanted to bring up here is that some of you may not be bringing in nearly enough hours on this. So you might want to consider time spent. Um, that said, I've had a lot of students take this class and do fairly well with less than that 24 hours time. But that depends on how strong a student you happen to be. So just keep that in mind. So that is the first place to take a look. There's lots more I want to go over here. Let's dive in and take a look at uh, D2L. Uh, some of the folks on the call are doing AMP1 with me. Some of the folks are doing AMP2. I'm just going to hop into one of these because the resources are really similar. Uh, we will hop back and forth between the two. But again, what you're going to find is sort of the same stuff along the way. Lecture hours or lecture videos is something I want to take a look at here. So as we dive in and come into, I'm going to go to AMP1 because it's the first place I'll land on. Uh, there is in the content area, and I know most of you have seen this, but there's one or two people who may not have. Over here on the left-hand side, uh, for AMP1, you guys have just finished the uh, exam three. You're moving it up on exam four starting uh, today. So let me, let me open that up. And what you're going to find as you open this is lecture videos for unit four. Excuse me, I've got a little recovery time here for my uh, illness here. So he, this is actually a playlist of videos. That's got chapter one, uh, lecture 11. As we pop that open, you can see, by the way, what I did to pop that open, in case you missed it, is that little three-line hamburger menu right there. I'm going to tap that, and you can see all the videos for lecture for unit four. So if you haven't watched the lecture videos, effectively that's not that's like not even coming to class. I do occasionally run into some students who don't bother with this. I don't think anybody in a face-to-face -face class would do the thing where you just never bother to show up except for test day and take a test. So if that has been you and you're not watching the lecture videos, by all means pop in there. For the AMP2 people, it's similar but not exactly the same. Uh, we're going to come down here and go back into AMP2. And as I open up the content area here for you guys, similar over on the left-hand menu, you guys are about to start working on exam three materials as soon as you finish exam two. Uh, there are lecture videos and slides for unit three. So for AMP2, you actually have individual videos instead of that playlist thing, but really similar. This one happens to be urinary system, and there's the urinary system PowerPoints. So uh, if anybody has not been watching the lecture videos, by all means, pop in there and take care of those. Um, I spent, <coughs> in most cases, quite a lot of time making sure those things were ready to roll, and they're there. Um, is there anything I've said so far, aside from the massive amount of time I'm suggesting, that's a surprise to anybody? Questions, comments? Holy crap, do I really need to spend that much time? How do I breathe? How, when do I sleep? That question comes up sometimes. <laughs> yep, there you go. All right, yeah, time to sleep is the fun one. I, I recommend lots of caffeine and an occasional babysitter to help. Um, so that is uh, where we are. Now, I'm not really going to open the learning catalytics exam reviews unless someone specifically needs me to. Um, the catch to learning catalytics, if you didn't buy your book from the bookstore, that actually is an additional purchase, uh, but there are some reviews that you're not seeing if you don't have those. Is there anybody by any chance who has uh, taken those lecture videos and thought they were particularly helpful or particularly unhelpful that's got any comment here? I'm going to try to unmute a couple of you who seem to be muted, uh, although it looks like maybe a couple of you guys muted yourself on purpose. Uh, so questions, are they helpful? I, I like that. Um, the one thing I will say is they are not intended to represent actual questions. I had one person 
uh, and some of you might find this humorous. I had one person last spring ask me, will you be giving us an exam review that includes the exact questions on the test? And if not, why not? And I think most of you know the answer on that one. It's like, well, no, you're not in kindergarten anymore, but there you go. But it, I will say the person was ballsy. I gave him kind of uh, a credit for asking that at least. Um, I do want to talk about mastering really quickly here before we dive on, and there's going to be quite a bit of time I want to spend on mastering. Um, oh, before I leave D, uh, D2L completely, though, there's one other thing I want to point out that you may or may not be aware of. If we come down here, uh, of course, you guys don't see the exact same stuff I do, but you all have either AMP1 or AMP2, and then there's this other course. If you haven't looked at this other course, it's helpful for a couple of reasons. First off, if you open that, you'll notice it's for uh, 2401, that's AMP1, 2402, that's AMP2, and 2404, that's intro to AMP. This is the lab, and you don't have any assignments at all in this, so rest assured there's nothing there that's going to directly impact your grade other than there's great stuff to study. So if you come in here, it's got the schedule for the Morgan Anatomy Tutorial Lab. If you haven't yet found the Morgan Anatomy Whoa. Tutorial Lab, that's in the Science Lab building on the main campus. If you've been to the main campus but have not been here, the Science Lab building, sometimes called the Slab, is... Uh, next to 5th Street, it's right next door to the two-story Math Biomedical Science Building, and it's diagonally across the parking lot from the uh, building that's got the bookstore in it. So if you come in there, that is uh, down at the far end of the hall. It happens to be room number 3317, and there are tutors in here. And i got to be careful how I use the word tutor because some of you have interacted with these people and have kind of come to the conclusion that they're not really tutors. And they're kind of not. They are not there as free paid tutors for all of A&P. That's not what they're about. Uh, and that's partly because all the instructors teach just a little bit differently. These people, that would be Sydney and Gage and Allison, uh, are former students of one or more of the instructors at TC. And what their job is, they are paid, so it's free for you, but they're there primarily to help you find the things in the lab book. And they're quite good at that, but they aren't there to help you learn the lecture stuff. So while it's, we occasionally have somebody who's lamenting, well, they're not really free tutors, they're just there to show me this lab stuff and help me find that stuff. Yeah, but that's true, but they're there to help you learn everything in the lab, and most of my exams, you've all done the fill in the blanks, they're there uh, to help you learn what comes down to about a third of the test. So in my head, that's non-trivial. So if you haven't been there, you can check and see what hours they're open. Monday, that lab is open from 8 in the morning till 9 at night. The tutor named Sydney is there from 8 until 1, and Gage is there on Monday from 2 o'clock till 9 o'clock. So there's an hour around lunchtime when you don't have anybody there from 1 to 2. There's nobody there on Monday. Tuesday, you got Gage from 8 to 10 and Allison from 5 to 9. So there's a little bit of a gap in Tuesday. Wednesday, 8 to 9 uh, is, again, the hours. Allison's there from 8 in the morning till lunchtime. Gage from 2 to 5.30. Sydney sometimes comes in on Wednesday. Uh, I'm sorry, no, I'm wrong. Sydney is also there from uh, 5.30 to 9. So you got, I'm not going to read the whole thing because you guys can read it, but the point there is you have people there on the main campus. We also have a lab on the Hutto campus, if that's closer to, if you live down around Austin, Round Rock, that's in room B308, and we have a tutor there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We don't have any weekend hours down at Hutto, but go there. It's really, really helpful. While we're still in this lab class, I want to show you something else. If you go into content here, hopefully you're used to going into content in our class already, pop open content here, and there's some lab videos that are outstanding at helping you learn some of the stuff. For AMP1 and AMP2, I will say this, AMP2 is not completely covered. We're building some of these videos here, but we have an organ system survey that goes over the anatomical lab models. We have tissues of the body with Dr. Lachlan, so that's histology. Skeletal system, Dr. Lachlan did that. I did the muscle system, nervous system, special senses. 
Uh, we have a, a bundle of those AMP1 videos for you to download. I've recently done the urinary system. That's coming up for the AMP2 folks. Endocrine is here along with cardiovascular. And some of the more recent videos, these here on the bottom, I did are kind of, frankly, freaking flashy. They're pretty cool. So you can pop these open and take a look. They do a great job showing you some stuff. And these even include some of the learning, not learning catalytics, I, I mix my metaphors, some of the complete anatomy videos, some of the, sorry, some of the complete anatomy images. So pop these open, they're really, really handy, and they can help you learn Space some last stuff. at tip of each papilla. Okay, while well, I said that was my video, that's actually my sweetheart who's professor. Major calyx. Hush, who's a professor of A&P as well. So I did the video, she did the over narration on that. Uh, but that's Dr. Williamson. She's actually going to be teaching AMP2 for us this fall. And she just came home from uh, treating some patients, so I'll stop babbling about that. Anyway, if you haven't found that, hop in there. Just out of curiosity, is there anybody on the call who has not been into that course at all or who has been there but didn't even know the lab videos were there? And that's okay if you don't want to comment. That's fine. <clears throat> All right, bringing us in. Uh, has anybody found or or maybe not found those lab videos over in the lab area? Excellent. I'm glad to hear that. The the lab. What, actually, no, those weren't in AMP1, although the AMP1 folks could use them. They're there for everybody. They're lab, as opposed to lecture videos. These are lab videos for you to use to learn the lab stuff. Yep, excellent, outstanding. I'm glad you found them already. So if you haven't found them, dive in there. They're in that other course over on D2L uh, down here and that one that looks like that. Pop in there and go into content. They're there. They're handy. They're really quite useful. Now, so that touches on... Where was that? Okay, that was uh, lab videos. I do want to talk about uh, mastering homework, and I want to mention a few things along the way here. I'm going to sign in as my dog. I don't know if you guys caught this or not, but I'm signed in as Sky Golden. I've got a golden retriever named Sky. So we're going to take a look and see how Sky's doing in her AMP class. My dog's actually not very bright, so forgive her her scores. I have an account for her so I can log in as one of you guys and see what it looks like from the point of view of a student because my view is a little different. So when we log in here and check on scores for Sky, uh, I have come in here and done a little bit of work just to get some scores in, so I've got something to show. My network is being slow, so forgive this as it loads. And she's apparently got about a 64.29. I do want to point out that I've seen some of you guys with grades this low. And the thing that I want to point out about this mastering homework is that it is open book. And as you guys know, you can often see this stuff days, if not weeks, ahead of time. So one thing I want to be sure to point out as we look at this is that... Um, by the way, just out of curiosity, before I finish that comment... Uh, and I do want to hear a few people speak up. Uh, it looks like Pacha has raised her hand. Pacha, was there something else that you wanted here? Oh, you were just telling me that I was on mute. Thank you. Um, how many of you, when you log in, have a mastering screen that looks like this? I suspect a lot of you. There's this list of things that are past due. Hopefully you don't have many of those. There's this list of upcoming assignments. Does this look familiar to a lot of you? I honestly hope it doesn't. And the reason I hope it doesn't is, for me, this view is confusing as hell. And I want to point out, I'm going to do a little zoom zoom. I want to zoom on this top right-hand corner. There's a calendar there. If you don't know, this is one of my favorite tricks. On the student page, if you click calendar, it switches to this view. So did I just startle anybody? Is there anybody who's not seen this view? Okay. Okay. If you haven't seen a view like this, take a look at any day you want here. Uh, like this case, uh, the 11th, which is tomorrow. If I zoom in on that, you can see that there are two icons on there. There's a blue circle and there is a uh, flame. The blue circle is regular old homework. The flame is dynamic study modules. And if I click on that day, these are those two assignments right there. If 
I click on the, if I look at the 12th, there's two things there. There's a little plus sign, which I believe is a quiz. Let's hover over that and see for sure. And up, oh, that's a complete anatomy. My bad. If I click on that, those are the two assignments there. So if you've not used this view before, this can be helpful. So for A and P one, it looks like there's one thing that's due my midnight tonight. It looks like it's probably a dynamic study module, and there you go. So if you haven't used this view and you've been trying to struggle to make sense of when in the, this goofy list there's something coming up, you might try switching over to the calendar. That helps. But I want to go back to what I was saying about my dog's grade for the semester. And that for her at this point, I think was a 64. Let's let that finish loading. Yeah, she's kind of sucking in here. Uh, and frankly, if it wasn't for me being her owner, she would be even worse. I've adjusted some scores for her. Um, the thing I want to point out about this is that these are all, literally all, open book. Uh, so there's no reason to not do fairly well on these. If we go back to the calendar, you can see that quite a lot of these you can see several weeks ahead of time. So if there's something that's coming up on, say, on the 14th, there's something you do on Sunday. That's not fair. Why would I make something do on Sunday? If you don't want to do it on Sunday, you can see it today. Click on that, pop that open, and get that thing done on Wednesday night, Thursday night, whatever works out for you. I've spread them out on the calendar like this, so you don't have 10 things all due on one day. So that's sort of the point there. And I think you guys know this, but I just want to remind you, mastering at the end of the semester is going to account for 20% of your grade. It's kind of there for a couple of things. One thing it's there is to be kind of a grade buffer. I intend it to boost your grade, uh, but some of you do have grades in the 50s or 60s, and it hurts my heart to see that because I put this here for a couple of things. First of all, it ought to give you the chance to really boost your grade, and if we go back to my keynote that my PowerPoint thing there for a minute ago how many hours was I just suggesting you spend studying which sounds like a crazy amount I know 16 hours beyond just the watching the course thing and then maybe as much as 24 hours total by the way I don't realistically expect you to actually spend 24 hours a week that's an enormous amount I get that I'm just saying it's a goal a target to maybe try for and if you're down in the range of spending four to six hours a week I guarantee you that's why your uh, courses are not doing or your exams are not doing what you want to do but the point here is this really busy calendar is me trying to guide you into more time spent on mastering more time spent working with the topics and in the end doing these you're effectively studying Break out your book, open one of these, read a question, find the answer in the book, and then commit to your answer. And if you use it with that approach, then you're likely to do better. Now, just out of curiosity, and I really do want to hear some comments here, how many of you have actually enjoyed and found some good from the dynamic study modules? I've heard some good comments over on GroupMe, but as an overall thought here, what are you guys thinking about the dynamic study models. Oh, we got a notice here, by the way. Thoughts on those? Yep. Yep. That's the point. Now, so thank you for that, Sacha. Now, one thing I will point out, ideally, if you're using these the way I really intend them to be used, I didn't mean to block my webcam there, sorry. If you're using these the way I intend them to be used, the best strategy is break out your book, open the dynamic study module, complete that, and then watch the lecture videos. The lecture videos are going to make a lot more sense if you do that. Because with that done, you will have open the book, flip through the chapter, seeing questions like this that are going to be important, and when I'm discussing those things in the lecture video, it'll be, oh, I got that. We talked about that uh, back when I was answering that one weird question that I couldn't quite find. So if you'll use the dynamic study modules as something to do before you watch lectures, it will help enormously. You might not always be able to make that happen, but that's a good strategy. Now, if some of you, and I saw this on GroupMe, you're doing a great thing there. You found that you can go back in and restart these in order to practice that's an outstanding strategy as well. Um, the blue dot things 
that are homework items, those are better done, say, in the middle of the chapter. Say it's Tuesday or Wednesday and you started the chapter on a Monday, you've seen some, maybe all, of the lecture videos, then come in and do the homeworks. And lastly, that little gold block there that's the end of chapter quiz. Make sure you've done everything else in the chapter. Everything. Watched all the videos, flipped through all the PowerPoint notes, done all the other homeworks, including dynamic study modules, before you open the chapter quiz. You found out already those are timed. They're kind of unforgiving on the time, although I was kind of generous. I think I've given you a nice buffer of time there. But if you save those for the very end, and it's why they're at the end on the calendar in most cases. Uh, but thanks for the comment there about the dynamic study modules. I found that those, for me, are really, really helpful as well. So that kind of covers the assignments. And part of the reason your calendar is as busy as it is is to encourage you to spend more and more time with the material. All of this, everything on that calendar, is designed to help you get a better understanding of the material. And with luck, that results in a better exam grade. So questions, comments on mastering homework? Yes. Yep. Right. They, they aren't, they, you're right, they are not designed to be similar questions, but the topics, the material, should be pretty much spot on. One thing I do want to show you, in case you guys haven't found it, is and I pulled these near the top of the page for both AMP1 and AMP2, is the What Should I Be Studying Course Objectives. It looks like this in AMP1, and if you haven't found these, these are kind of gold when you sit down to study for that exam. I'll come down to where we sort of are in AMP1 right now. You guys are moving out of muscles and into the nervous system. So for chapter 12, name the major regions of the brain. Name and locate the ventricles of the brain. List major functions, uh, li sorry, list major lobes, fissures, and functional areas in the cerebral cortex. If you come back to here, to this, and this is effectively the list of course objectives that all the instructors for AMP sit down and determine what we need you to understand when you get out of the class. It's less focused on exactly how a particular question is delivered and more focused on you getting the material. So I sort of intentionally uh, don't design homework and test questions to be really similar questions. But the material covered, the topics that are addressed, should be pretty darn close. I guarantee you I'm going to be asking it in a little different way. But if you're, it, this is certainly not a course where memorizing a question and that it, the answer is going to look sort of like this, that's not going to get you there. Uh, that may or may not help, but there you go. By the way, for the AMP2 people, this is what that looks like for you. I didn't make the fancy little banner, but it's listed as course objectives here. If you pop it open, you're going to get the document for you guys. So if you haven't seen those yet, when you sit down for the exam and start to get ready, I would have this as a checklist and say, okay, have I found all these things? Uh, if you haven't seen this, hopefully this is helpful. So your, your comment about the questions on the test not matching the questions you're seeing on homework, I hear that all the time, and that, whether it's a pleasant thing or not, is actually kind of by design. Um, any other questions before I bring up the next idea, which is going to be the study area? Okay. Um, I think a lot of you have found the study area. It's sort of an obvious thing when you're in mastering and you're trying to study that here's the study area. What I don't want is I don't want you to see this calendar and see all these assignments, whether you look at it this way or this way, 
And again, for those of you who have missed that, I'm using these two little icons right here in the top right, either the list view or the calendar view. I personally prefer the list view. I'm not giving you all this, this monstrous long list of assignments uh, to taunt you. It really is there to help you study. But in addition to that, please consider opening the study area. When you do that, you're going to get, I don't know why you've got to click twice, but you do. You're going to get to this page. And again, I'm assuming almost everyone has found this, but if you haven't, by all means, pop in here. And there are several things on this area that I want to show you. The obvious, I think, is study by chapter. So as we pop this open, and this is going to look exactly the same with for AMP 1 and 2, you can come in here anywhere and open, say, Central Nervous System, and there are going to be little practice quizzes for each chapter section. So these are not for a grade. They're here purely for you to come in here and kind of check where you're doing. The cerebellum functions in coordinating movement, and I'm right on that one. Bundles of white matter in the cerebrum are known as, they happen to be tracts, but let me put in nerves, which is wrong. It's going to tell me that's wrong. Which of the three primary vesicles form the neural tube? Let's just do that for grins, and that one is wrong as well. And you can see the results there, and you can even see the answers along the way. Uh, so if you haven't found the study by chapter, that's kind of handy. And you can go in there and do quizzes for each and every chapter along the way. But there's a lot more here. Um, I'm going to show you something that not everybody has. Not everybody has access to the e-text. You had to either buy your book and, ah, my dog doesn't have it. This is going to kill me. I can't show you that right now. I'll show it to you myself in a minute as an instructor. I'll have to log out of my dog's account to show you that. So if you didn't buy the e-text, it's going to give you the opportunity to buy it. Um, you know what? I'm wrong. This actually does look like my dog's got it. I clicked the wrong thing there. Uh, but there's some great study things associated with the e-text. Obviously, this is a book. So if you hit continue reading, you can read the book along the way here. Um, something that is coming as of this Friday is assigned reading. I'm probably not going to do that with you guys, but it's a brand new thing that just came in from Pearson. Uh, instructors can actually assign reading. And you guys are, if, if you happen to be with me in the fall for AMP 1 or 2, uh, then you'll possibly see some of those things along the way here. My browser is misbehaving like crazy here. Let's come into body coverings and see if we can't get that to open. You know what? I'm thinking my dog doesn't have the e-tech, so we're going to skip that. We'll look at it a bit later on. Yeah, it's an upgrade. We'll look at it a little bit later on as myself as an instructor. I'll log into my own account. But there's lots more to see here. Let me actually take my messages offline. Thank you. We don't need friends pinging me while this is going on. <clears throat> Practice tests and quizzes are going to get you the same ones we had by chapter. Uh, lab tools, Practice Anatomy Lab and PAL flashcards. Again, I think a lot of you have found these, but in case you haven't, I want to wake up PAL flashcards. And most of you have found, I keep saying that and I keep hoping it's true, but most of you have the lab book. If you don't have this lab book, then you're kind of hosed. Is there, by chance, anybody on the call who doesn't have the lab book? I don't want you to say it out loud, but if you can, just shoot me a private chat uh, over on the chat window. Uh, and I can drag my thing over there, but it's not going to let me show you there. You can send me a private message. This is actually the list of things that is required for you to learn for the lab. So if you come into, let me get back to that window, you come back into PAL flashcards, and you come into anatomical models. By the way, you can pretty much avoid human cadaver because I'm never going to put any of those cadaver images on an exam. You'll see models from our lab photographed on the exam, and you'll see complete anatomy images on the exam. But the cadaver images I generally don't do at all. I'm going to put up something respiratory. I wouldn't put up something that AMP2 would do. I'm going to select respiratory system after I selected anatomical models. Now I've got to hit submit. And now what I would do as a student is I would open that lab book and I would look and see what the instructor is going to have me know. That would be alveoli, the arytenoid cartilage, the hyoid bone, the corniculate cartilage, the cricoid cartilage. The, there's a lot of stuff here we don't need, so don't bother with it. 
external nares is on that list the hyoid was on there the lobes of the lung are on on yeah are all on there so is the larynx so is the laryngopharynx so is the lingual tonsil so is the middle concha the lobe of the lung so basically check everything that is in that lab book and what you're going to see here didn't want that what you're going to see here is once we're done with this I'm going to stop picking stuff here because it's going to be the same point no matter what I do uh, you have two options at the bottom of this you can either hit review or quiz I'm going to show you both <coughs> and if you haven't seen these they're kind of handy review gets us a picture of an, a model that is actually in our lab they're not all in our lab but most of them are you flip that around that looks to me like the uh, corniculate cartilages and I was right uh, if you'll notice down here it says one of ten it doesn't matter how many of those things you select it's gonna randomly make a selection of ten cards from your list that you checked I'm gonna scroll to the next one that looks to me like let's flip that around that's the arytenoid cartilage and at any point along the way here, I can change over to quiz mode. I can do that in the top right hand corner, which is right up there. If I hit go to quiz mode, now we're going to see an image that's pointing to something. And I'll zoom in. That looks to me like it's probably... Turn that around. That looks to me like it's probably the thyroid cartilage. Nope, I wish that was cricoid. Yeah, yeah, I was right on that. So we switched over to quiz mode. I can go back to self-review mode where it's going to tell me what it is. Uh, and that is kind of handy. For me, the time I would use this if I were a student is when I was done looking at the lecture videos. I was looking at the lab book, going over what I needed to know. I'd already gone through most of those in Complete Anatomy, and I kind of wanted to review myself. So that's PAL flashcards if you haven't used them yet. They're kind of handy. They're pretty neat, and you find them in the study area and lab tools. You can also go into the old school classic PAL practice anatomy lab that's the same sort of stuff it's just laid out a little bit differently as we go into anatomical models and back into rest you know what let's not go to respiratory let's go to nervous which AMP1 is doing right now central nervous system here we've got it looks like we've got 18 slides here and we can turn the labels on so it's kind of like looking at one of the models in our lab that's been pre-labeled this particular brain model actually is in our lab that the parietal lobe that's the uh, temporal lobe. Back over here, we've got the occipital, and there's the cerebellum. If you tap it, you'll get a pronunciation, and off we go. Uh, we can also, as we're looking at these, scroll through. And again, these pictures are all but identical to the models you're going to find in our lab. In plain old PAL, you can also go into quiz mode, where it's going to give you multiple choices. Or if you really want to test yourself, this is what I would do right before the exam. Come in here and select Lab Practical. That's going to basically force you to type in an answer. And there, you kind of are getting the, the uh, real-world practice experience of doing the lab part of the test. That looks to me like it's probably... Cranial Nerve 6. And it probably actually wants the uh, name for that. Put in the answer, and you can just scroll on through. Um, it's not going to tell you the answer right away because it's sort of a practice practical. You will get your score at the end. And I think that wanted the name, not just the number of the nerve. So if you haven't tried PAL, again, that's quite helpful. Let's leave this. Thank you for that. And let's get back out of here. Um, more stuff that I think is really, really handy uh, is more study tools. Your author, Dr. Aaron Ammerman, actually did a podcast for each and every chapter. And here I actually do want an out loud answer. Has anybody by any chance found the uh, author podcast? Cool. What do you think of them? Just out of curiosity. This is kind of a brand new thing. That would help. Agreed. Okay, let me play a little bit of one. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'm going to come down here to something for AMP2, since I just did something for AMP1. You guys are coming up on respiratory, so I'm going to pop this open here. 
Uh, you can, I believe, download these. You can download the MP3 or the script. But what you have here is a player, and you've got the script of what she's going to read right here. So let me just click play for a moment so you can see what this does. We're not going to play the whole 10 minutes of this, but you'll get the point. I did click play, I promise. Welcome to the podcast for Chapter 21 for the textbook Human Anatomy and Physiology by Aaron Ammerman. I'm Dr. Ammerman, and for this podcast, I'd like to talk about carbon dioxide transport and the effect this has on the pH of the blood. This topic is very important in the clinical and sports worlds because disruptions in the rate and depth of breathing are really common, and these... Okay, I'm going to stop playing that, but my point is these are here, and you're exactly right. I'm not sure who said that, but these are way more helpful if you actually have the chapter open. Uh, but they're here. She took the time to do one for every single chapter. Uh, she still teaches this course as well, uh, and uh, like she did these specifically for her students and decided to share them with her textbook. So they are there, and if you haven't yet seen them, then by all means hop in there and do that. A couple more things here that are handy but not necessarily uh, uh, helpful for every single chapter is these bone and dissection videos. Uh, AMP 1, you're already done with the skeletal system, but there were a lot of bone videos in here. Uh, and the way they work is you pick a bone you want to look at, like the cranium, and you've got a nice little video that's going to show this. <coughs> What's going to happen here is the person doing the narration will point at something, say the name, and it will be highlighted in purple. And you'll all hate me because you'll think... The cranium is the part of the skull. You'll think, darn, I wish I knew this when I was looking at the skeleton. It closes the brain. It's made up of the frontal bone. She said it. It's highlighted and the word's there. Which ends at the coronal suture. <coughs> Behind the frontal bone are the two parietal... Stop. Okay, so yeah, I get it. That would have been really handy when you were doing the, uh, the bones, but there is still some help here <coughs> because we also have the cow eye. You'll need that for special senses. The sheep brain, there are seven videos there. Uh, for AMP2, we have the sheep kidney and the sheep heart. Yes, I know the heart's already done, <coughs> but there's a couple of videos on the kidney that can be helpful as well. <clears throat> Most of you know I've been spending the last month or so being sick, and that's still catching up with me, so forgive my coughing. It's kind of reaching back in and taking over. So that, I think, gets me through most of the things I wanted to put out in the study area. If you haven't seen those yet, by all means, please take a look at that. We did the lab tutor page <coughs> over on D2L already. I do want to mention study groups, uh, and then we'll take a look at complete anatomy and try to answer some questions along the way there. Um, if you haven't yet started working together, and I did in that uh, survey <clears throat> that I asked you to come fill out on uh, learning catalytics, a lot of you pretty much said you're studying on your own and you like it that way. Um, for a course like this, and as you get into nursing and some of the folks on the call may already be in the, in particular, the LVN program, it is way more helpful to sit down with a group of people that you work with on a regular basis and study material This is that's this hard. A lot of you have figured out that you did not, and this is where now about halfway into the summer, you figured out that you didn't only sign up for an AMP class, but you signed up for what is effectively another entire language class. You've got to learn the language for this with the weird names like gastrocnemius and sternocleidomastoid and all these various body parts. So you've got to learn not only the language, but the weird spelling of it and the material. And stuff like that is just much easier if you have a team to study with. So hopefully some of these tools will help. I have found that it's really effective if study groups come into the main campus and study, especially in the anatomy lab. So you've got kind of a reference around you. It also kind of sets the mood if you're surrounded by all those anatomical models. So I think the last thing that I had on my agenda to look at here was complete anatomy. But before I wake that up, has anybody got any questions about anything I've covered so far or anything that I've not covered so far? <coughs> okay. Well, if not, then I'm going to go ahead and wake up complete anatomy. Megan, it looks like you've got your hand in the air. What can I do for you? Let me make sure you're not muted. 
And you're, yep, yep, you're not muted. What can I do for you, Megan? Yep. Um, the only way for me to do that would be to pile, say, every single one of those on a Monday. And that would end up frustrating somebody else. But the beauty about that, that I would like to think that you get, is one point to realize is if you can see it on the calendar, you can work on it. So just because it's due on a Sunday doesn't mean you've got to wait till Sunday to do it. If you want to pick a day, say Thursday, and do all of them on that day, then by all means, feel free to do that. Um, if I piled it all on a day, it makes it harder to read when you're looking at that calendar. And it's uh, a, a bit more of a pain. So pick a day, and as long as it's not after the due date, you can do that. Right? Okay. I completely get that. And for somebody else, it's going to be a completely different pattern. So if I stuck them all on the weekend, there are some people on the call, I guarantee you, who are working Saturday and Sunday, and that's the only time they have that they can work. So if I was to dump everything on a Saturday or Sunday to make it easier for you, I just screwed somebody else. So they're spread out the way they are. Uh, please just realize you can work ahead of time. So if there's a couple of days where you can't work, then do those days a little ahead of time and you should be fine. There is absolutely nothing wrong with you waiting until a weekend to do everything as long as it's the weekend before something's due. Now, I've came... Pardon? There you go. All right, I'm going to log in here. I got logged out because... Uh, it's a year since we started using this. I'm not going to do the little trick on how you get signed in, but I've got a video for that if anyone needs it. <clears throat> and now I'm back in here. Um, I tend to like complete anatomy myself with this gray background. If yours has got a black background and you're wondering how the heck I did that, if you let me do that slower. If you come here to settings on the right and open up your preferences, you can change several things here, including the color scheme. I personally don't like this black background. Uh, I used Complete Anatomy before they had it. So I like coming into preferences in the settings and making that background gray because it's a little easier for me to kind of make my eyes work with that. Across the bottom, you can see all the organ systems here. And I'm going to pick on any old item at all. In this case, I tapped on the forehead, so we lit up the frontal bone. And across the top here, this, I'm going to zoom here, and hopefully it's zooming with you. We have the axial skeleton bones, the head and neck. This list of words at the top is called the breadcrumb trail. So I can tap on anything in here, and it's going to light up. That's the axial skeleton. That's just the bones of the head and neck. That's the entire skeletal system. So the breadcrumb trail helps you, in some cases, find things really quickly. Uh, what I want to do next is go to bones of the head and neck and in the left hand menu hide everything else. So now all I've got is just the skull. If you get in the situation where you get something way off the screen or way zoomed in or out, if you hit the home button in the very top right hand corner that's always going to bring you back to standard anatomical position. So if you get lost that's an easy way back in. I'm going to zoom in on this thing and I'm going to tap on the right maxilla and I'm going to hit fade on that to make it kind of glassy. And what I'm going to do next is come in here and tap on the vomer, which is kind of hard to find in most cases. It's that little bone right there. But what I've done there is effectively turn the maxilla into glass so you can see through it. And now you've got a really good view of the vomer, which is on your list of bones to find in uh, AMP1. I'm also going to come in here and tap on the sphenoid and hide everything else. Yes, AMP1 folks, I know you've already done the skeletal system, but there's kind of a neat little way to find lots of things in there. I'm going to hit on parts, and greater wing is showing up there in pink. So there's the lesser wing. Those were on your list to learn. We also have the cella tercica, which is on your list to learn that they're in pink as well. And yay. <clears throat> so let me get back here and get back to the bones of the head and neck. And I'm going to bring in something that AMP1 is studying right now, which is nervous system. 
And as I do that, I'm just going to click Add, and that's going to bring in... Hello? Why are you misbehaving on me? Full body... Nervous. There we go. That's what I was looking for. And now I'm going to come in, just for grins, to make this a really pretty dissection. I'm going to add in some muscles along the way here. And I'm going to turn this. Didn't mean to tilt that guy. I'm not sure how that worked. But I'm going to grab that muscle. And I'm going to just hit the delete key on my keyboard. We'll do the same thing there. And there. And there. And there. Now I'm going to grab the meninges. That's the dura mater of the brain. There's the arachnoid mater of the brain. Now we're down to the brain itself. And I'm going to tap that. Delete one more time, and we're down to some, in, some pretty neat features on the inside of the brain. Let me go back to standard anatomical position and do a little zoom on this. And now you're beginning to get some neat little details of where things are in the brain. For those of you in AMP1, putamen is going to be on your lab list, so you've just got a nice, neat little view of that. If I want to clean this up a lot, I'm going to come over here to nervous system and say, you know what, get all the other junk out of my way. Hide everything else and get me to just the nervous system. And that makes that a lot neater. Uh, I'm going to come in here to brain, or just central nervous system maybe, and hide everything else, and that just got a whole lot neater yet. So if you haven't yet learned to navigate complete anatomy, hopefully that helps a little bit. Questions here? One other thing that's really handy and I'm going to come in here and do something for the AMP2 people. Let me get rid of all the nervous and come back to full body. And I'll bring in the skeleton just for grins because we can. Uh, for the folks in AMP2, you're coming into times when you're looking at digestive and nervous. I'm going to open up the search, which is in the top right hand corner, and put in large intestine. And there you have it in search. If we tap that, it wakes up and comes, comes right in. And I can tap on that. It's going to tell me it's part of the digestive system. So I'm going to tap in our uh, breadcrumb trail here. I'm going to tap on digestive system. And that all will come right in. And now let's get the, rid of the skeleton. I'm going to select skeleton and click minus to move that out of there. And <clears throat> at this point, I can start clicking around and exploring. Or yet again, I can open my lab book up and look for something that is in the lab book like... Uh, let's say pyloric sphincter and <coughs> excuse me actually they're gonna call it something else we'll go with pyloric canal and that'll wake that up right there so it's apparently right in there I'm gonna switch over to stomach and hide everything else and now I've got a great look at just the stomach and I can start taking this apart. I have the body of the stomach. I'm going to hit delete and take that off. And you've got a great view of the three layers of the stomach. And that valve that I was just looking for is right there. Questions on complete anatomy. I know this has given some of you some issues along the way here. show you a dissection that I sometimes do to help people understand a little bit better how to use this. For this one, what I like to do is show <clears throat> the leg and some muscles around the leg. So what I'm going to pick here is lower limb right. I'll turn on the skeleton because we kind of need that if we're looking at the leg. I'm going to bring in some muscles. As I click that, with every click I'm adding muscles from deep to superficial and you guys who were in AMP1, one thing that you had to find was the rectus femoris. So I'm going to type in rectus femoris and tap right one, and it's going to highlight and show me where it is. In my toolbox, I can grab labels and simply stick a label on something that was highlighted. And now I've got a label on that. Let me turn this stuff back to just lower leg right so we have a little bit simpler view. And now, because I know what, know what muscles I was studying from the lab book, I can grab labels again and tap on the vastus medialis. 
and the vastus lateralis. And one thing that you can do is here you can save the view, and my save abilities turned off. I need to re log in here, but at any rate, uh, you can save the view and save this with a little plus that it should appear right here. I've got to go tweak that on my settings, and that will let me save this as a thing to study. Um, yay! Uh, for the folks who are saying this helps a lot, I'm really, really glad to hear that. Um, on these labels, for the some but not all body structures, there's more information. On muscles, you've got origin, insertion, action, nerve supply, and blood supply. Uh, you don't have quite that amount of information on some of these, but there's a lot. Muscles, one of the things that was important is origin, insertion, action. If you select any muscle and come over here to motion, you can see the actions that thing can do. So I'm going to tap on extension, and we'll see that there. That's not a video, that's my model. So I can still zoom, I can turn it, I can look at that muscle doing its thing from behind or maybe from the inside of the leg. Uh, kind of neat and cuddly. And that helps to learn origin, insertion, action. Hopefully some of you found those already. And I can turn these muscles off, of course. And yay. Okay, we've got a few messages that came in that saying that helpful. Is there any questions you guys have about functionality of this thing? I will say this, the phone version is a little different. Let me see if I can't get that to behave itself here. I may possibly be able to show you guys complete anatomy on the phone. I'll just have to see if my software is behaving itself right now. Got an app that will let me project it on the screen. Yes. Yep. Yep. Right. Ah, <clears throat> uh, that's one of my, that's one of my favorite things. Yeah. Okay. One neat feature, and since you're on your phone, you won't see this, but I've got the rectus femoris selected. I'm then going to turn on multi-select. Multi-select is in the left-hand menu, and I'm going to also click on the vastus medialis and vastus lateralis. And what I'm going to select here is fade others. So when I hit fade others, the people who are watching this can tell you everything but those three muscles just got really ghosty. So those really stand out now. Um, that is, I think, what you're asking. Yep. Mm hmm. Okay, what do you mean when you say save the rest? Oh, fa oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. That in the top left hand menu, what you want to click on there is, is with those selected, you want to click on fade others. So if you hit fade others, that's going to fade out everything else. And it does it really quite well. And you'll see that when you watch the video because I've been recording this. Uh, I don't know whether we have the computer audio in this audio or not, so you guys may or may not be there, but I don't, I'm not sure. But regardless, you're going to hear my explanation. And this happens to be, oh, it's 532, but I don't have the timing on the video. But yes, that's a great little tool, and that will help you to get a view that's sometimes hard to see. One that I like to do for the folks who are watching this is the gluteus muscles are kind of a pain to get to. So I'm going to select the, oh, I don't want multiple select, thank you. I'm going to select the gluteus medius and I'm actually going to hide it for right now. I'm going to select the gluteus minimus and hide others or fade others. And now you really kind of see that popping out where it is in relation to everything else. That's one that's kind of deep and it's hard to see. And your trick actually makes it much easier to see where that muscle is. So it's really, really handy for seeing deep structures. So it's a great trick and thanks for bringing that up. Any other questions? Because we're kind of running short on time. We're actually pushing the hour that I promised you guys. 
and I'm going to have to get rolling myself here pretty quick, but I'd be happy to handle any other questions you've got right now, either in chat or out loud. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to get my phone up on screen to show you complete anatomy on the phone, but uh, <clears throat> I think I've got some videos that I've shown you some of that before and maybe more coming. Well, if no one else has any other questions, I'm going to call this. I want to thank you all for your time, and uh, please feel free to, to speak up over on GroupMe and let folks know uh, if they have any questions. Uh, I think a few of you have, been, have promised to help uh, friends who uh, were not there. And it sounds like a couple people are beginning to sign out already. So I'm actually going to say thank you all for your time. I may try to do another one of these in a week or so. Uh, but for now, I think I'm going to call it. Thank you all for your time, and I will see you back online. See ya. Bye-bye. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care, guys.